Hello, everyone. This is Jalal Kazanpur, uh, an associate professor at DTU, Technical University of Denmark. Thank you, Ning, for inviting me to this very interesting uh, panel about low carbon multi energy systems integration at IEEE PS General Meeting 2020. Here, I would like to talk about coordination of electricity, heat, and natural gas systems accounting for their network flexibility. This is a shared work, joint work with Anna Ishwile from DTU and Adriana Arigo, Charlotte Verwein, and Fran Francois Vallée from University of Mons in Belgium. Um, this talk is based on a paper uh, which was recently presented at Power Systems Computation Conference, PSCC 2020, and you can get uh, the paper using this link in, in the screen. Uh, this is uh, the story which is happening in Denmark. The uh, penetration of renewables in Denmark is significantly growing. For example, last year in 2019, uh, almost half of Danish electricity load was supplied by renewables, 47% uh, by wind and 3% by solar. And this is expected to reach 100% by 2050. So increasing renewables simply means that we need more operational flexibility to cope with renewables variability and uncertainty. So we have uh, plenty sources of flexibility in power systems, for example, demand response, uh, storage, uh, hydropower units, uh, HVDC lines. But one of them, which is the focus of this work, is integration of power system to other energy systems, including natural gas, and heat systems. Uh, well, the integration or uh, 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 interdependency of power and heat systems is increasing uh, by uh, installing more and more heat pumps and combined heat and power units, CHPs. Uh, in Denmark, it's estimated that by 2030, more than 200,000 additional heat pumps will be installed which increases the integration of these two systems. The same story goes to uh, power and natural gas systems. Uh, at their interface, we have gas-fired power plants, and by installing more and more uh, this type of power plants, uh, these two systems, power and natural gas, they are integrating more and more. So it's desirable that we develop a holistic system, a holistic model, uh, for operation of all three systems together, power, natural gas, and heat. But it brings its own complexities. For example, uh, in the heat side, the relationship of time delay of heat, prop heat propagation in, in heat pipelines, the mass flow of uh, heat transfer in the pipelines and pipeline length, their relationship is non-convex and non-linear. But the good thing is that uh, we can store massive amount of heat in the heat pipelines, while we can't still store electricity in a very large scale in uh, electricity storage units. Uh, the same story exists in uh, uh, natural gas system. We can store uh, massive amount of natural gas in pipelines, but the relationship of pressure at the two nodes of the pipeline and the flow across that pipeline is nonlinear and non-convex. So if we would like to model a holistic system, it will be non-convex. So uh, the research question of this work is that how we can quantify the maximum potential of flexibility, in particular network flexibility, that we can achieve from heat pipelines and gas pipelines and to bring it to power system. And in particular, we would like to know how can we model the flow dynamics in heat and gas sites in a convex way. There are massive literature about uh, energy systems integration, uh, but majority of them only consider two out of the three systems. For example, there are several papers uh, considering power and gas or only power and heat but accounting for energy flow dynamics. There are only a few papers having or considering all three systems, power, heat, and gas, but usually they use something they call energy hubs and they uh, ignore the flow dynamics of, uh, of gas and heat and therefore they ignore the network flexibility. So I think this is one of the first works 
that consider all three systems together and try to model the network flexibility in a convex way. And this is exactly the contribution of this work. So we are trying to develop a single optimization model. It's a co-optimization accounting for three, three systems. And the objective function is minimizing the total system cost, the cost of three systems subject to constraints of each system and the coupling constraint. I have to mention that, well, this is a still an ideal benchmark. It might not be a very practical model because it simply assumes that we have a single uh, system operator. But we know that in reality, for example, in Denmark or in other countries, each system, each energy system has its own uh, system operator. While here, when we consider a single optimization model, it, it only assumes that we have a single system operator. So we see this model uh, that I will explain soon as an ideal benchmark that we can understand how much maximum flexibility we can achieve. And then in future works, we can see how we can uh, develop uh, coordination schemes, for example, market-based coordination schemes to be able to unlock the maximum flexibility. So here in our uh, uh, co-optimization model, we have a single objective function, which is minimizing the total system cost. And it's fortunately linear. You can see the formulation of the objective function in the paper. This objective function is subject to power system constraints. Again, as assumption, we consider DC power flow model, lossless DC power model, and it's, <coughs> sorry, and it's linear. But the gas system constraints, they are nonlinear because of having quadratic equality constraint that I will explain later soon. The heat side constraints, they are even worse because they are mixed integer and they are non-convex. They are mixed integer because of binary variables uh, modeling the, the uh, time delay of heat propagation in heat pipelines, and it's non-convex because of quadratic equality constraints and the coupling constraint, which are linear. So the whole model together is mixed integer and nonlinear, which is not good. We don't have off-the-shelf solvers to solve such a problem. So our mission in this work is to make it convex. We still have binaries, but the nonlinear part, we like to make it convex. So uh, from the gas side, as I mentioned, we have quadratic equality constraint. Uh, you see the, uh, the constraint. QMU is the uh, gas flow from node M to node U, and it, and it depends to pressure square of the nodes N, uh, M and U. And it's a quadratic equality constraint, which is linear. But how can we make it convex? It's easy, we can make it uh, inequality. So Q is lower than or equal to right-hand side, and it's uh, just simply a conic constraint, and it's convex. The same goes for heat side. Again, in the heat side, we have a equality quadratic constraint, which links the losses and mass flows uh, between the two nodes O and V. Uh, but again, we can make it uh, lower than or equal to, it will be a conic constraint, it's, it's convex. Also in the heat side, we have a bilinear terms, which are the product of mass flow of heat propagation in the pipelines and temperatures uh, in supply and return uh, pipelines. Uh, they are bilinear, the product of two variables. So we can use a uh, McCormick uh, relaxation uh, to make it convex, but it's a relaxation. So all this relaxation together, two conic relaxation and one McCormick, uh, eventually our model will be mixed integer second order cone program. So still we have binaries from heat side, but we don't have uh, non-convexity anymore because we relax all non-convexities and now we have uh, mixed integer SOCP. Well, so we try to implement this model for a small case study, slightly small. Uh, for the power side, we have 24 IEEE reliability test system. For the gas side, we have uh, a system with uh, 12 uh, buses and uh, a couple of compressors. And for heat side, it's a very small, it's just three node system with two CHPs and uh, yeah, that's it. So this is the, uh, our case study.
So let me uh, show a couple of results. Um, the upper plot shows the, the, the uh, charging and discharging of all pipelines, gas pipelines, 12 uh, uh, pipeline, over 24 hours. So uh, uh, the dark blue shows the hours that we are storing gas in the pipeline. So we are charging this virtual storage. While the light blue showing the hours that we are discharging, so we are getting gas that we already stored in the pipelines. Uh, we have the same story in the lower plot that shows the uh, heat charging and discharging in the pipelines over the, the 24 hours. The interesting thing is that this works like a storage for power side. Uh, they are in the gas and heat sites, but power side can see them as a virtual storage. And the interesting thing is that it comes at a free cost. We are using the existing infrastructure. We are not building new infrastructure. So this uh, plot shows uh, the total system cost with and without network flexibility for different rates of wind power penetration, which is total wind uh, power divided by total load. Uh, it's a deterministic model. And uh, we see that by having uh, network flexibility, total system cost decreases around one to two percent, which is a significant amount. Also, the wind curtailment is uh, lowering significantly, not significantly, something around one to two percent, but one to two percent wind uh, curtailment reduction could be uh, interesting and significant. And uh, well, and this comes from network flexibility in heat side and gas. So, well, uh, remember that we used uh, uh, relaxation methods. So now we should see a posteriori whether these relaxations are exact or not. We saw that from the heat side, the relaxations are exact using some tricks by broadening the temperature uh, constraint. We explained this trick uh, 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 in detail in the paper. But for the gas side, our relaxation at, at, uh, in some hours, in some pipelines, uh, are not uh, exact. So this plot shows uh, the 24 hours and 12 pipelines. In most of the hours, the relaxation is exact. The color is white. But in some hours, the relaxation is not exact. It means that the right-hand side and left-hand side, left side of quadratic equality constraints, they are not equal. So in some hours, and for some specific uh, pipelines, specifically seven and eight, the relaxation is not good. But in overall, in average, the relaxation error is something uh, like 1% uh, or 2%, less than 2%, uh, which is, in general, good. Uh, I have to mention that uh, in pipeline seven and eight, they are, in, they are within a loop in the gas uh, network. And this is why the relaxation for them is not very good. Well, as a conclusion, we uh, modeled, we developed a comprehensive uh, co-optimization model. Originally, it's mixed integer nonlinear. We made it convex, so the resulting model is mixed integer uh, second order cone uh, program. And uh, it works well. The relaxation error is something about one to two percent. So as a future work, we can think how we can make it further tighter. Uh, but uh, our results show that by using this network flexibility, the total system cost uh, can, can lower by one to two percent, which is good. And uh, we should work more on that. Uh, well, this is a, a, a list of references we used uh, for this work. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can check it out in the paper. And thank you so much for your attention. Uh, you, you see my email address. And if you have any question about this talk or uh, the model in the paper, please feel free to uh, reach out to me. Thank you so much for your attention.